Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change a gear case on your top load washer. It's a really easy job. Let me show you how we do it. Now to do this repair, you will need to be able to lay the washer on its back. So first of all, we'll need to disconnect the power, so unplug it from the wall. We'll also need to turn off the inlet water supplies and remove both fill hoses as well as the drain hose. And try to drain as much water out of that drain hose as you can, and then we'll pull that washer far enough forward that we can lay it down. Now with our hoses disconnected and the washer unplugged, we pulled it out where we can access the back of it. So our next step will be to remove some screws that secure the hinge portion of that main top to the cabinet. There's one on either side, typically a quarter inch hex head screw. And then we're also going to remove the screw for this little access cover. You may note that there are two different types of screws. The ones for the hinges are a machine type screw and the other is a self tapping. So lift that cover off, we'll set that aside. And then we'll wanna make sure that we have that washer in a position where we can raise the top up and be able to lean it up against the wall or have somebody to support it. Now our next step will be to raise the main top and lid assembly. So just grasp either side of it, pull it slightly forward, lift up, push it back a bit, and then it should lift up completely. At this point, we want to make sure that we support the back of it as well as the lid. Make sure that the top stays in those metal tabs that are attached to the cabinet. Either have somebody support that top or have it close enough to a wall that you can lay it up against it. Now our next step will be to remove either the agitator or this impeller. If it's an agitator, you need to remove the fabric softener dispenser at the top of it and reach down inside and access a 7 16 bolt. On this style, we simply need to remove this cover, take a flat blade screwdriver, and you'll find along the edge that there'll be a slotted opening. Simply put the screwdriver in there, pry that up and then pop that off. We'll next need to remove the 7 16 bolt. You may need to hold the tub from turning as you remove that bolt. So lift that off and we'll set that aside. And then we'll also need to pull that impeller off of the Transmission shaft. You may need to wiggle that just a bit. And just pull it straight up and remove it. Now, if your model has a tub nut in this area, you'll need to remove that using a spanner wrench. Or is the updated style, it has this horseshoe clip. We simply need to pry that clip away from this hub. So using a flat blade screwdriver, just pry against the hub. Once you get that center portion up over top of that screw, it should slide it relatively easy. tapered horseshoe clip that holds that inner tub to the shaft assembly. With that removed, our tub should be free on that transmission. So our next step will be to remove the tub cover. So to remove the tub cover, we need to release these clips around the perimeter. So you may need a flat blade screwdriver, just gently go in and while pushing down on that tub cover, pry outward to release it from that tab. And just do that around all of the clips along the edge of that tub cover.
Now with all the clips released, we lift that tub cover out of the way. On next, we just grasp the inside edges of that inner tub and we'll lift it off of the transmission. Now it may be on there fairly snug. You may need to put some penetrating fluid in that area just to let it soak for a bit and then you should be able to pull it straight up. Now with the inner basket removed, we're going to put the main top and lid down. Just pivot it down into position, let it drop onto the two clips at the front. It should be laying flush when you push it back and that will latch it into position. Now just to ensure that it stays there, we'll put those two screws in on either side at the back just to hold it because we're going to lay that washer on its back. So that'll hold the top in position. Now we're going to gently lay that washer on its back so that we can remove that gear case from the bottom. Now with the washer laying on its back, our next step will be to remove this cover. So using either an 8 millimeter or a 5 16 nut driver, we'll remove these two mounting screws. We just set that cover aside. The next we'll roll the belt off of this pulley and set that aside. Next we'll remove that drive pulley from the bottom. Now using a 13 millimeter socket, we'll remove that nut. And the pulley's going to turn quite freely so you'll need to hold that and you may need some help to support it and give that ratchet a bump. Simply remove the nut and slide the pulley off. Now we'll also remove the shifter assembly. So we'll need to disconnect the wire harness first. There are locking tabs on the back side of that you need to depress. These are the two locking tabs. And we'll also want to disconnect the rest of that wire harness. So we'll just pull the plug away from the capacitor. Follow that harness over to the motor and we'll disconnect it from that side. Just to press the locking tab and pull that harness off. Now there's a couple of arrowhead fasteners that secure that harness to the bottom of that gear case assembly. You need a pair of needle nose pliers just to pry those away. We also suggest that you remove the drain pump from the bottom of the outer tub. There are three eight millimeter bolts that hold that to the bottom of the tub, so we'll need to remove those. And just pry that at the bottom of the tub. And you may also wish to take the motor off of that gear case housing just to lighten the weight. Again, there are two mounting bolts, a 13 millimeter socket. Should loosen those. and lift the motor away and set that aside. Well, next we'll remove that housing from the bottom of the outer tub by removing these four 10 millimeter bolts. Now with the mounting bolts removed, 
You should be able to grasp that housing and pull it away from the bottom of the tub. All right, now our next step will be to remove that shifter mechanism. Just remove the two Phillips screws. And then lift it out of the housing. So we'll set that carefully aside. Now next we'll remove this outer casing around that shifter housing. And it's fitted into the metal portion of that gear case with four little plastic tabs. So we need to depress those tabs while lifting up on that housing. We have to lift that housing off, as well as the gear. Set those aside. Remove the compression spring. Now the last thing to remove will be the motor capacitor. And to do that, you'll note that there's a little pin that fits into a hole in that housing. So you need to just pry up slightly on the capacitor, then we're going to pivot it counterclockwise. Once that pin has cleared the housing, go over an eighth of a turn, and we can lift it out. We'll then discard the old gear case, and we'll start to reassemble the components on the new one. We can begin with the motor capacitor. Simply line up that X-shaped piece in that square opening. Rotate it clockwise while lifting up slightly on this end until that pin drops into a hole. Slide the compression spring over that spine. And we're gonna line up that set of gears over top of that spline. Now when assembling this clutch assembly, we wanna make sure that we have that lever positioned in between that spacing. You'll also take note that there's a shorter space between these two legs than the other three spaces. And that is going to position that lever in about this position. So slide that center gear over the spline shaft. Then line up that outer housing, fitting all four legs into the slotted openings. And then we're going to rotate it clockwise. make sure that those four legs go completely clockwise until they lock into place. Now with that position correctly, our next step will be to put our shifter assembly on. Make sure we engage that hook into the opening. And the two screw holes should line up. Now you can either choose to put the motor on now, but we're gonna wait until we have the whole assembly mounted in the bottom of the tub, just so we lessen the weight. Now before we put that gear case into the outer tub, we wanna make sure that this area is nice and clean so that our new tub seal will seal properly. So remove any dirt or corrosion that may be in that opening. And you can also put a thin film of liquid dish detergent, just a drop or two of it around that seal to lubricate it enough so that it will slide in easy. So just carefully lift that assembly up. Line it up with the opening. And 
just rock it back and forth until it bottoms out. And then we'll line up the four bolt holes and install the retaining bolts. We begin by placing one of them. We won't tighten those yet until we have all four of them lined up. And we'll use our socket and ratchet to tighten them. Be careful not to over tighten them because they are being threaded into plastic. We don't want to strip it. Now once we've tightened those four bolts, we'll go ahead and put our motor on. Position it so that the wire harness connector is pointing down. And then just line up the two bolt holes. And then just tighten with the ratchet. Well, next, we'll put the drive pulley on. So you line up the splines on that lower shaft. And then install the retaining nut. Grasp that pulley firmly so that we can tighten that nut securely. Next, we'll reinstall that drain pump. Again, you may want to just clean that gasket a bit, as well as the opening in the tub. Remove any debris and then just apply a little bit of liquid dish detergent on that gasket so that it will slide it easier. So line it up with the bottom of the tub so that your bolt holes line up properly. Just rock it back and forth until it bottoms out. And then install the retaining bolts. Sure they're tight and securely. Then we'll root that wire harness into its position. Start by installing that one fastener into the opening in the bottom of the housing. Attach the wire to our capacitor. Fit that connector into the housing. And then reconnect the motor plug. Making sure that the Tab engages. We'll reconnect the shifter harness. Okay, make sure both those locking tabs engage. We're now ready to put the belt back on. We'll start by hooking it over the motor pulley first and then we'll rotate it onto the larger pulley. Now you need to make sure that that belt sits inside of the motor pulley and it should center itself pretty much on that larger pulley. We're now ready to put the belt cover back on. So line up that locating pin
install the two retaining screws. And now we're ready to stand the washer back up. So next we're going to drop that inner tub back onto the gear case shaft. Now there are splines on the inside of that hub that will line up with the splines on that shaft. So make sure that they're lined up properly and that it should drop down completely. And next we will put the horseshoe clip in to make sure that it is firmly seated. Now with the inner basket placed back into the outer tub, the spline is lined up. We just want to make sure that we're, it's pushed down far enough that the top edge of that hub sits just above the shoulder of that drive tube. To verify that, when we put our horseshoe shaped clip in, Line it up with the guide marks. It should meet some resistance going in. I may be able to push it in by hand or use a small soft face hammer. Once it's set into that little opening on the end there, it's fully inserted. So just lift up on the tub to make sure that it is engaged. It should be trying to pull the over tub and transmission and everything up. So that verifies that we have it locked in place. Our next step will be to reinstall our agitator or our impeller. There's a spline on the inside of that impeller that will mate up with that shaft. It should have it centered, rotate it a bit, and it should drop down in. We'll then put our retaining bolt in. So make sure the rubber washer is up at the top of that bolt. Fit it down into that opening. And you're using either a 7 16 socket or an 11 millimeter socket. We'll tighten that securely. Next, we'll put the cap back on. We want to make sure that we line up that slotted opening with one of the three fins on that impeller. That will ensure that the clips fall down into the proper spot. Simply snap that in place. Now, next, we need to put our tub cover back on. The first step is to make sure that we have it lined up properly. There are some locating tabs around the perimeter that will line up with individual studs on the outer tub. That will ensure that the locking tabs are in the right position. So we'll make sure that the outside edge of the tub fits up into this little groove around the perimeter of that tub cover. So line it up all the way around first before we engage any of the clips. And then we just need to press down on that tub cover until those tabs engage. Now with all of them locked in place, we're now ready to put the main top back down. Now we'll simply tilt that main top and lid back down into position, make sure it's even side by side, and just pull it far enough forward that it drops down onto the mounting clips, which is almost flush with the front. And pull it slightly forward again until it drops down flush between the main top and the cabinet. Push it straight back and it should be locked in position. Then we'll reinstall the screws across the back. 
So remembering to use the machine type screws for the hinge portion. If the top is on correctly, those holes should line up. And then we'll put that cover on and position it so that the narrow tab will fit through this opening in the back panel and into that cross member. Upper tab will fit into that slot and then it should just pivot over. Now we can install a retaining screw. And now we're ready to push the washer back into position where we can reconnect our fill hoses and our drain hose. We're now ready to reconnect our inlet fill hoses, our drain hose, we're ready to plug the washer back in, push it back into position, and our repair is complete.